Hi, my name's Neil. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why early grab backside airs are just no good for me anymore. Okay, so backside airs have got to be like one of the dream tricks for a skateboarder skating transition. Certainly one of mine. And I never really thought I was actually going to be able to do them. It was something that completely eluded me in my younger years. I didn't, I couldn't even sort of contemplate how you would do them, let alone whether I could do them or not. And it always seemed to me that it was something that only vert skaters could do because you'd have to blast out the top of a vert ramp to fly up in the air like that. I never thought I would be able to go that fast or jump in the air like that. So it was never even on my radar until I started skating vert. And I was seeing all my other friends that I was skating vert with doing them. And it began to sort of dwell on me that maybe it was a possibility at some point. And it was probably about a year ago when I started to think that I need to start trying to do them. I think I've been skating vert for two years now, maybe a bit more than two years. And to me, it was, you know, it was amazing just to be able to skate on a vert ramp at all. But once you start to realize that there's a point when you go up the ramp that you go a bit weightless, that's when it kind of kicks into you that you think, oh yeah, okay, this is how people fly or do airs and things like that. It's that weightlessness that allows you to go up in the air and float before you come back down again. Now, obviously it wasn't going to be something I was going to do straight away. I wasn't just going to drop in and blast out the top of a vert ramp and that's it. I'm Tony Hawk. Um, there's a lot more steps to it before you get to that state. But with some encouragement from some of my friends, I began to kind of make inquiries as to what it took to take off. And for me, the easiest thing to be doing was an early grab backside air. And in the early stages, all we're really talking about for me was just bending down and grabbing the rail of the board. So that was a melon grab and hopping and turning at the same time to try and get the feeling of taking off. So I was literally just hopping and turning and maybe only turning like 45 degrees or 90 degrees. But it was that that began to give me the feeling of how to perhaps develop and start doing an air. And from there onwards, it really was just a case of going faster and faster and going higher and higher up the ramp to the point where you get to the peak of your height and you start to go a bit weightless. I was bending, grabbing and hopping, kind of yanking the board and turning as I went. And that slowly over time turned into an early grab backside air. I think in total, maybe it took me a few months to actually learn how to do that, which was pretty good going, I suppose. But I was never really massively impressed by them. And so I was trying to get higher and higher because really the ultimate goal was to get out the top of the ramp. Now, doing that is like a whole other step. You know, if you can do it lower down, that's fair enough. But doing it out the top, it starts to get harder and harder. And it's especially hard if you're older like me and you're not very flexible, your, your hips and your legs at my kind of age, I'm 44, the kind of mobility and flexibility just isn't there when you're my kind of age, unless you've been doing some sports to keep yourself flexible and supple. But I wasn't doing sports. I, I literally started skateboarding again in order to get a bit fitter because I wasn't doing any exercise whatsoever. So the idea of bending down, touching my toes is hard enough, but bending down, grabbing your board and jumping in the air is a whole other game. So it can be a whole lot easier if you're a lot younger, a lot more flexible, a lot shorter. It's not so far to bend down. And uh, if you've got short legs anyway, it's just a lot easier to do. If you're taller or got longer legs or a bit older or a bit less flexible, especially in your legs, your knees and your hips, your hamstrings, then it's it's a massive challenge to be able to do that. Now, initially, you might think that, OK, if you can do a backside air lower down the ramp, all you need to do is go faster and faster to launch out the top, which is true to a certain extent. And, you know, if you're shorter and more flexible, then it will be a lot easier. Oh, and not only shorter, more flexible, but lighter. If your body weight is anything like what mine is, and I, I don't even know what it is at the moment, but you know, if you're a full grown adult, your body weight is a lot more. And so you've got to think about how that body weight is impacting what you're doing when you're moving. Something very heavy moving very fast 
is going to have a lot more influence over something very light going about the same speed. So you've got a battle against where your body weight is throwing you as well. And most of this is just getting used to going with the flow. So if you're going down a ramp and up the other side, it's the pumping motion of going up the other side that is going to send you up even higher. And that's generally what you need to do is go with the flow. And as you move up the ramp, you try to send yourself out the top and vert skaters call it the glass wall. You've kind of got to imagine that there's another foot of vert above the coping that you ride straight through the coping and keep riding upwards uh, through the glass wall. But what you've got to do at the same time is battle gravity and where that's trying to send you. So if you haven't got the flow quite right to send you up, what tends to happen in the early days, and certainly what happens to me, is that as you go through the bottom of the ramp and begin to go up the other side, if you bend down to grab the board early, your body weight is going down against the ramp. And so with your body weight going downwards towards the ramp, you're no longer promoting it to be going up. And so as you bend down to grab, your body weight is sucking you down against the ramp and you can just sack it into the wall. You literally crouch and squat to the point where you sack yourself into the wall, kill all your speed, and you don't go up in the air anymore. You just go against the wall rather than through and up it. So that's become really apparent to me in learning what I'm trying to do. And it's always been part of my thing about riding vert is to stay against the wall as I get higher. And then that, with the centrifugal force of that, uh, that motion, keeps me against the wall and stops me falling out and then down into the flat bottom. So I've always got that in my mind to stay against the wall, but that's not quite so helpful if you're trying to go up and out the top. So you need to kind of resist going against the wall as much as possible, but still trying to grab and the two would conflict with each other. And that's why you end up not going out the top. So I'm going to show you a few clips of me actually doing those early grab backside airs. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And as I bend down and I get to that certain point where I'm bending down up the wall, it's kind of killing all my speed and I don't continue to go up. I just kind of stay where I am and do the backside air below the coping. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so there we go. And to begin with, I just need to state that I wasn't actually trying to land any of these airs. My my whole kind of idea at this point was to try and improve my takeoff and go higher. But I was hitting that kind of hurdle where I got to the point where I'm bending down, sacking off all of my speed to the point where I just kind of float up and then fall down again so I can do backside airs below the coping I can land them uh, look back through some of my other videos if you want to see that but the whole goal that I was aiming for here was to be able to try and do them higher and so I wasn't even rotating round to spot the landing I was just trying to take off and uh, and get up there higher so uh, if you're watching this thinking well you can't even land one so what are you doing um, Actually, yes, I can land them lower down, but uh, my goal here was to try and take off and go higher. So as you can see, and as has become more apparent to me when trying these in normal skate sessions, as I start to bend down and grab the board, 
I'm sacking off all my speed and I've lost all my potential to go up higher. And so my thoughts were, okay, I need to just grab later. And uh, really, it's the balance between grabbing late enough that you're still just before you take off, if, if you're doing early grabs, that is. So you want to grab early before you take off, but I'm going to leave it late enough that you're bouncing off the coping just at the right point and uh, and getting the air and it's all about timing and controlling your body weight and the flow through and up and out the top and really what i've come to realize you know if i'm doing this for any period of time during a session the amount of pain it puts my hips and my knees through just bending down and early grabbing like that it's almost becoming like a pointless exercise i don't really want to do early grab airs at all anyway because they're just not stylish they don't look very good at all and so now that i know how to air i think i'm just need to stop doing them at all now don't get me wrong one great reason for learning to do the early grabs is to start learning how to air so if you're thinking about learning how to air early grabs are a great way to learn how to do it and more than anything else they are a great way for you to learn how to land an air when you're up in the air you take off you need to be able to turn around spot your landing and actually follow through with the landing and ride away so they're a great way for you to learn how to land an air so don't not learn early grabs just because they don't look very good it's uh, an entry point to learning them better so What's the answer? Well, for me, I need to kind of back off of trying to progress early grabs any further and I need to learn how to do late grabs. And that's more a case of riding up the ramp and continuing to ride up the ramp, not bending down, but let yourself ride up the ramp to the point where your your legs are still straight as you're riding up the ramp. So you're not sacking off any of your speed and waiting to the point where your back wheels will hit the coping so you lift up the front let your back wheels hit the coping and that will bounce you up in the air and at that point you reach and grab the board and continue the air turn look spot your landing and then try and land it now i can do that in the sense that i can take off and grab the board however it's it's a nose grab rather than a rail grab which is great because it means you're not bending down and squatting to try and reach the rail that's the hardest thing is that doing a melon grab you're grabbing behind your front foot and so you're bending down and having to contort yourself and squat very low to be able to reach the rail which is easy enough for an early grab because your board's not going anywhere but if you try and do that taking off, you have to squat down in midair and it's just hard to do. Whereas you can literally take off and reach out and grab your nose without much effort at all. The problem with that is that it's not as much of a stable grab as grabbing between your feet. Grabbing between your feet, you can pull the board against the bottom of your feet. You can just pull it up and hold it against the bottom of your feet. And that's why the melon grab is quite an easy one for doing backside airs because you're holding the board against your feet. Now I could try and grab indie, but uh, that would be an easier grab than, uh, than sort of grabbing um, melon because you've got a lot more room there in front of me to grab. Uh, but I always feel like I'm going to nosedive if I'm trying to grab indie, and it's still quite a bend down compared to a nose grab. The problem with a nose grab is taking off and keeping the board against your feet. You've got to pull your front foot in to allow the board to stay against your feet because if your front foot extends out, you push the board away from you, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. My front foot is pushing the board away from me. So if I go up the ramp and jump out the top and kind of ping my wheels against the coping, by the time I grab it, I'm pushing the board away from me and it's it's out here and I'm looking down and the board's not under my feet anymore. And so unless I'm really good and really quick to be able to yank the board and throw it back under my feet, which I'm not in a position to be doing yet. Um, you know, you see people doing kickflip indies and they they put it right out there, grab it and put it back again or or there. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not fast enough thinking and I'm not going high enough to be able to pull it back in and throw it under my feet. There's a difficulty in when doing those grabs of keeping the board underneath you 
But the concept really is that it's a different trick. And to start taking off and being able to turn and spot your landing and go back in again. Well, the advice from most people is to start doing it by doing backside kick turns grabbing your nose and just do that more and more backside kick turn and as you're kick turning grab the nose and once you get comfortable grabbing the nose as you begin to turn you then start grabbing the nose and giving a little hop as you turn very slight hop as you go and so you slowly build that up and up and up and if you're going fast enough the idea is before you know it you're taking off just a tiny bit each time and so you can then build on that and progress and go a bit faster and a bit faster and that little hop that much should get bigger and bigger to the point where you're comfortable hopping a small amount and turning and landing back in again that you can start sort of pushing it a bit harder and bouncing the wheels off the coping and before you know it you should be in nose grab backside air territory way easier said than done of course but there's a fantastic video from uh, Michi brusco who talks through the process of doing a proper backside air which i'll put a link in the comments below but all i really want to say right now is that that's my kind of target now um the the early grabs are not gonna get me very much further and so i need to start doing nose grab extended legs bonk the coping kind of backside airs so so let's just have a look at me uh, and the beginnings of trying to do that <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you kind of understand what I'm saying now and it's that kind of kick turn at the peak of the height. So you get to a certain height and you start to slow down and go a bit weightless. It's at that point that you can kick turn and grab the nose. But really it's the balance of turning all the way around and spotting back where you're going, uh, hoping to land, sucking in the front foot, which I clearly haven't got the technique yet but suck in that front foot as I turn and keep the board under my feet. You know, at the moment I'm pulling it away and, you know, throwing it and going to my knees. But um, really the build up is to be able to do that kick turn, suck my front leg up and keep it kind of out the way and stop, stop it from pushing my board away rotating and keep the board under me and stuff it back under my feet and go through with the landing so it's early days but that's what I'm working on I thought I'd do a little video just to talk about the transition between early grab backside airs and starting to think about the late grab and uh, yeah maybe you found that useful maybe you find it interesting but uh, I'm just kind of diarising where I'm at right now today and where I'm moving towards. There are a million videos on YouTube about how to do backside airs. So if you want to learn, you know, go check them out. I'm sure people that can already do them are going to bombard me with advice. Thank you very much. You know, uh, there's advice coming out of my ears from all directions. Uh, it's one thing getting the advice. The other thing is actually being able to move it from here to your body parts <laughs> so uh, it's hard it's really hard and uh, having command of your limbs and your balance and your body weight and all of those things is the hardest part there's no shortage of advice and information available it's all out there but uh, as i say i'll put a link to the mitchy briscoe uh, video because he talks 
through it like you know he knows exactly what he's doing if you found it useful let me know in the comments below but uh onwards let's see where that takes me but thanks for watching hope you found the video interesting and i don't think i've done a vert video for a little while so uh this is my vert progress or where i'm aiming for anyway have a good day get out there and skate learn something tell me what you're learning too and i will catch up with you soon thanks for watching bye